Hello, the Anton Sprawl here. In many of my videos, I talk about problem solving and why it's so important in programming. But problem solving is a skill we can use just about anywhere, and it can sometimes be helpful to cross train. In this video, I'm going to try to solve the problem of aiming shots in World of Warships. Let me say straight away that I'm just an average World of Warships player, and I play in the mid tiers. There are lots of great videos out there by people who play much better than I ever will. But the methods I've seen in other videos for aiming shots doesn't click with me. I'll sometimes read stuff that just doesn't make sense, like that the crosshairs are calibrated for 20 knots or something like that. That's just not true in any sense that you can rely on. Of course, the bottom line is, does a method work for you? If you can put your shots on the target, that's all that matters. So if one of these other methods is working, keep using it. But if you're new to the game or are still having trouble lining up shots, I'm going to explain how I developed a reliable method of aiming that I call ghost chip targeting. To solve any problem, we need to define it. In World of Warships, the problem is that our shots take a long time to reach the target and the target is in motion. In the simplest situation, our target is moving perpendicular to our sight. Let's say we want to hit the middle of the ship. That may not be where we want to hit in every situation, but let's go with that for this discussion. The question is, how far in front of the ship should we shoot so that our shells will meet the ship at that point? To figure this out, we need to know three things. How long does it take our shells to fly that far away? How fast is the ship moving? And we need some way of measuring distance on the ocean surface from our point of view. The first one is easy, because the game will tell us that directly. You just need to hold down the ALT key, or even better, go into the game settings and turn the alternative battle interface on, and then it will always be there. This number just below in the left of your aiming reticule is the number of seconds it will take for your shells to land. Perfect. Now let's talk about speed, because World of Warships is playing a little game with us in terms of ship speed. In this example, this Wyoming battleship is going full speed. We know that because the plume of smoke is going almost straight back. Now there's other videos to go through this element in more detail, but basically the curve of the plume varies in terms of the ship's relative speed in relation to its maximum speed. So a straight back plume means full speed. Well, full speed on a Wyoming is a mere 20.5 knots. Given that, I'm leading this target way too much. Now, why do I say this? Well, the Wyoming is a little over 171 meters long. And the Wyoming is about 10 ticks long in our crosshair view here. Which means at this distance, one tick on the crosshair must be about 17 meters, right? Well, one knot is a little more than half a meter per second. So my shells are going to take 8.88 .8 seconds to reach the target, but in that time at 20.5 knots, the Wyoming will have traveled a little more than 90 meters, or about five and a half tick marks. So the bow of the ship is still going to be 100 meters away from where my shell lands, let alone the area I actually want to hit. So there's no way these shells can hit, right? But what happens? Two hits near the second smokestack. So how fast is the Wyoming actually going? If we go back and look at where that smokestack was when I launched the shells, we see that the Wyoming has actually traveled around 13 ticks, or 228 meters, in those 8.88 seconds. And that works out to a speed of nearly 50 knots. That's not a battleship, that's a speedboat with big guns. Now I've done a number of experiments like this watching video of shots tracking, and also watching how long it takes the entire length of the ship to pass a point of nearby land or something like that. And I've estimated the scaling factor at 2.45. So when the game says that, say, a Tenru it has a max speed of 32.5 knots, I think that's really closer to a whopping 80 knots. Well, now we have a good idea of how fast the targets are traveling, and we know how long our shells will be in the air. 
From this, we can figure out how far the ship will travel during the shelf light time. Now all we need is a way to measure distance while looking through our targeting crosshairs. We've got these tick marks on the screen, so maybe those will help. The problem is, the distance between two tick marks changes based on how far away we're looking. If we're looking very far away, each tick mark represents a large distance, and if we're looking at something up close, the tick mark represents a much shorter distance. The game allows you to choose between a static crosshair, in which the same tick spacing is maintained no matter what the zoom level is, and a dynamic crosshair, which adjusts the spacing of the ticks based on the zoom level. But this doesn't actually solve the problem. It just means that if we have determined the distance between tick marks at a particular viewing distance, with, and then the dynamic crosshair will allow us to change the zoom level and have the distance between the tick marks remain the same. Now we might think we can get away with not knowing the distance between the tick marks at all. If we're shooting at a close target, for example, then the tick marks represent shorter distances, but it's also the case that the shell uh, flight time is shorter. So maybe there's a simple ratio between the tick marks and the shell time. If that were the case, the only remaining factor would be the speed of the target ship. I think this is why you sometimes see people talk about the tick marks being calibrated for 20 knots or 30 knots or something like that. The problem is, that the relationship between shell time and tick mark distance cannot be linear. You see, if you're shooting at a distant target, not only does the shell have more ocean to cross, it's also flying at a much higher trajectory. So a shell may be going to a target twice as far away, but the total time spent in the air may be like three times as long. So any ratio between tick marks and shell travel time will only hold for a narrow range of distances. Now that I've said what won't work, let me tell you what does work, or at least for me. And I call this ghost ship targeting. Here's the idea. Remember how the video started. I said the Wyoming was 171 meters long, and its actual travel speed in the game is about 50 knots. At that speed, it's going to take a Wyoming about six and a half seconds to cross a distance equal to its own length. In other words, if the Wyoming is going full speed in a straight line, in six and a half seconds, it should be exactly one ship length in front of its current location. So we can imagine a ghost ship sailing stern to bow in front of the ship where it is now. Let's say that our shelf light time was six and a half seconds. We could therefore aim at the place on the ghost ship that we want to hit and let the shells fly. Now if our shell time was larger or smaller, we could adjust accordingly. If the flight time was 9 seconds, that's about a ship length and a half. If it's 3 seconds, that's half the ship length. And 12 or 13 seconds, well that would be two ship lengths, and, and so on. Now you may be saying, okay, well, alright, but what if I'm not shooting at a Wyoming? Am I going to have to remember a whole bunch of different numbers for different ships? No, not really. Although the number varies for each ship, they cluster based on the type of the ship. For all battleships up to around tier 8, uh, you can use 6 or 6.5 seconds. Cruisers all cluster around 4 seconds, while destroyers are around 2 to 2.5 seconds. The real outliers here are the aircraft carriers. I mean, all aircraft carriers are necessarily long, but they vary greatly in speed, and that means their time to cross their own length also varies quite a bit. But honestly, hitting aircraft carriers is not the big problem in this game. Now, this system also works no matter the orientation of the target ship. If the target is at an angle, again, you just put the ghost ship running stern to bow against the ship on the screen, and this accounts for everything. Here's an example. This time I'm in a Wyoming, and I've got a bead on a Karlsruhe, a cruiser. So my magic number is 4. My flight time here is a little more than 8 seconds, so that's two ghost ships. Now here's how the tick marks can actually help. The Karlsruhe is 7 ticks long, so that means I should aim about 14 tick marks to the left of what I want to hit. Note that it looks like I'm aiming a little high. That's because the cruiser is headed away from me a bit. 
So in my head, I'm aiming at the waterline of my ghost ship. So I let the shells go and... Puncture his citadel for massive damage, which is kind of lucky because he started to turn a lot more than I expected. And obviously turning and speed changes and so on still have to be accounted for when aiming. But ghost ship targeting allows me to fire a salvo with confidence instead of having to fire out single shells to judge aiming and that's a huge difference. If you're a World of Warships player, I hope this helps you out. And if you're a problem solver from any area, I hope this gives you something to think about when solving problems. Thanks for watching.